A few events in Jules Verne's life, from his birth in 1828 to his death in 1905. In 1828, on February 8th, in France, Jules Verne was born in the port city of Nantes at a time when Nantes was still bustling with activity from the French maritime boom and the African slave trade. He was the oldest of five siblings. His father, an attorney with a successful private practice, expected Verne to study law and take over the family business. His mother, the daughter of a family of navigators and shipbuilders and a lyricist with poetic inclinations, instilled in him a love for the sea and travel. Legend has it that, in 1839, when he was 11 years old, Jules Verne tried to run away on a ship bound for the West Indies, but was caught by his father and brought back home before reaching open waters. As a young boy, Verne loved studying Latin, Greek, geology, and geography. He was also a good reader and spent countless hours enjoying the works of James Fenimore Cooper, Sir Walter Scott, Charles Dickens, Victor Hugo, Daniel Defoe, and Johann Wyss. Those authors appealed to his love for travel and adventure and influenced his own writing. In 1848, 19-year-old Jules Verne began studying law in Paris just months after the French Revolution from February. Two years later, he received his law degree. But chose to pursue a career in writing instead. During that time, he met Alexandre Dumas, both father and son. The three became friends and collaborated on a series of short stories, plays, and magazine articles. Unable to make enough money from his writing, he still depended on his father for financial support. In 1857, soon-to-be 29-year-old Verne married Honorine de Vian Morel, a 26-year-old widow and mother of two children. To support his new family, Verne became a stockbroker at Egli & Company. He continued to write, waking up early so he could work on his stories for five hours every morning. In 1863, at the age of 35, Jules Verne published to great success his first novel, five weeks in a balloon. He immediately and happily resigned his position as a stockbroker and dedicated his time to writing. From then on, Verne published an average of two novels a year for a total of 54 books collectively known as Voyage Extraordinaire or Extraordinary Journeys. In 1868, Jules Verne bought the first of his three yachts each of them named Saint Michel after his only son. He traveled a lot, visiting places like North Africa, Portugal, Gibraltar, Scotland, Ireland, Netherlands, Norway, Denmark, Germany, Italy, and New York. In 1886, Verne's favorite nephew, Gaston, tried to kill him. Gaston fired two shots. The first one missed its target, but the second one hit Jules Verne in the shin and gave him a limp for the rest of his life. The incident was blamed on the nephew's poor mental health and Gaston was sent to a mental institution. Shortly after, Jules Verne's longtime publisher died. His mother passed away the following year. That darker period caused Verne's turn to pessimism, both in his writing and in his outlook on how science could affect humanity. Later works, 
talk about the destructive potential of technology, the plight of orphans, the corrupting power of missionaries in foreign lands, the extinction of animal species, and the ravaging effects the oil industry had on the environment. During that time, Verne was elected to the Municipal Council of Amiens, France, a position he held for 15 years. In 1905, at the age of 77, Jules Verne died of complications from diabetes. He was at home, surrounded by family. He left behind a drawer filled with manuscripts of works in progress. Some of the novels he had been working on but never finished were later changed and published by his son. The statue placed on Jules Verne's grave is called Towards Immortality and Eternal Youth. It was designed by French sculptor Albert Rose and it shows the shrouded figure of Verne breaking his tombstone and emerging from the grave. It is a fitting memorial to a writer whose books still captured the hearts and imaginations of readers from all over the world.